Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to talk about five reasons that you should not be a doctor. A few days ago we did a video and a podcast on five reasons why you should be a doctor and now we're going to look at the other side of that. Becoming a physician is a long and expensive process so it's important to make sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. Here we're going to go over five common themes and reasons that we've seen that are concerning but obviously this is not an all-inclusive list. Now first and foremost, you should not be a doctor if you want to be rich. Now on paper, a well-established attending physician does make a good amount of money, but if this is your sole reason to become a doctor, you seriously need to reconsider. To get to the point of being an established attending, you have to sacrifice a lot of money and time up front. Assuming you follow a traditional path, you'll be doing four years of college, four years of medical school, three to seven years of residency, and potentially one to two years of fellowship before getting there. Now, unless you have scholarships or rich parents, you'll be taking on about two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars of debt, which will accrue interest until you pay it off. Once you're an attending, you're an employee, which means you'll be taxed in the highest bracket as well. So be careful and consider these factors before you decide to become a doctor for the money. We've done another podcast and video talking about if doctors are rich or not and the nuances behind that, so make sure you watch that as well. Now the second thing is, you should not become a doctor if you want status or prestige. Doctors used to be looked up to as heroes or God's workers by some. Although there's still some well-deserved respect for physicians, things are not the way they used to be. Big egos and type A personalities are still attracted to medical school, but they don't get the status and prestige at the level that they were hoping for. These days, anybody calls themselves a doctor and puts on the expert hat on whatever topic they choose. Some people are licensed PhDs, some find a way to get a degree that gives them the title of doctor, such as a doctor of philosophy, or anything like that without clarifying their level of expertise. They advertise themselves as doctors on social media and locally, taking away from that prestige pie, so to speak. Now this obviously has its own dangers in the social media age and people trusting you with information, but that's a whole nother topic. Nurse practitioners and RNs as well as physician assistants are being given more independence and autonomy, which is great for them, but when it comes to certain specialties, the separation between these titles and an MD is becoming less and less clear. Now, if you have such a big ego or insecurities that cause you to seek out status and validation in everything you do, there are much bigger problems you need to deal with. But the answer to this need is certainly not being a doctor, at least not at the level that it used to be, especially if this is your only or one of the biggest reasons for pursuing this path. Next, you should not become a doctor if you want instant gratification. In today's social media world where everybody online is a millionaire and constantly happy, You'll be surprised to know that being and becoming a doctor is not like that. There are a few big moments like getting into medical school or matching to residency which will bring about these high feelings of gratification, but other than that it's about finding the joy and the monotonous and doing a lot of things that you don't want to do until you get to that point. You have to find a way to enjoy this time as well as these are the formative years of your life and you should have some fun memories to look back on. It's a long road and your feelings of gratification will come in a slow drip over time. So make sure that the juice is worth the squeeze for you before going down this path just because everybody else is doing it. Next, you should not become a doctor if you want to help people. Now this might sound weird, but hear us out. Obviously wanting to help people is something that every doctor-to-be should want to do, but the reality is that the actual helping people part is only about 20-30% to of the job. Most of it, much to the dismay of current physicians, is documentation, studying, and administrative work that you have no desire to do. Dealing with tough patients, their families, and with people you don't like working with is another factor. Now there's tons of ways to help people without becoming a doctor. Other roles in healthcare, donating to charity with a job that's not related to medicine, volunteering, and just being a good person overall can provide that fix. Or you could always become an Instagram influencer and save the world that way. But in all seriousness, there's levels to wanting to help people. If you want to help people strictly as a physician and you just would not be happy doing it any other way, then by all means, become a doctor. But if you're just kind of into helping people 
and you want to do it because it makes you feel good, but you don't necessarily need to do all that medical training and be a doctor to do it, then heavily reconsider. Now, last but not least, you should not become a doctor if you want full autonomy. Once you become an attending physician, you are the leader of the team and top of the hierarchy. So you do have some autonomy there, but you have to keep in mind that there's levels to this game. Unless you have the capital or investment to have an entirely independent practice, you're working on someone else's terms. The hospital controls your shift work, OR time, when you're on call, when or how much vacation you get, and in the trenches you're also working with other specialties and individuals. And believe it or not, you are not their number one priority, they have their own lives to be concerned with. So if you're waiting for an x-ray or a report to come back before making your next decision, you will wait until the radiologist or the lab tech takes time to do it. There will be a lot of waiting around and doing nothing, which can be very frustrating. Now you do have more independence and autonomy as a physician compared to other jobs, but you're never really fully independent or on your own. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If freedom of time and setting your own schedule is high on your list of priorities, you may want to look at other things. So those are the five things that we wanted to talk to you guys about. Again, this is not to discourage you from becoming a physician. It's just about considering your reasons and making sure that you're doing it for the right reasons. Most of the time, people that are burning out or don't like it anymore did it for the wrong reasons. So please, consider these things while you're still ahead of the game and you still have choices to make. We hope this helped you guys out and as always feel free to reach out to us and let us know what you want to hear about next.